all the coders out there we welcome you to another exciting video on lodash an awesome library to manipulate arrays and collection in javascript for those who are coming from a strong database background you all know how to manipulate data in tables with sql lodash is just like sql but not for tables but for json objects and arrays if you know what i mean last video we discussed about lodash map function comprehensively for those who have missed it or if you are interested in learning about map function we have added the link down below in the description okay let's see what we are going to learn today lodash search functions we ourselves have coined this word it's not an actual word in lodash documentation but it's just because these functions lets you search for items inside a collection based on some predicate logic which returns either truthy or falsey so let's see which are the functions that we are going to learn so we have filter method reject method partition method sum and every let's see what lodash documentation tells us about each of this function so let's search for the filter function in lodash documentation so it says the filter function iterates over element of collection returning an array of all elements the predicate returns truthy for the predicate is invoked with three arguments the value the index and the collection so the predicate here means it's a function that either return true or false so it can be any function that just returns either true or false and if the predicate function is returning true the filter method will add that particular item in the result of the collection so now let's try to see it in action i have a code pen here where we can write some code and test this out so in the code pen first of all we have to include the lodash library here so let's go to the settings js and search for the lodash 4.17.15 which is exactly the same version which we can find here this is the latest one and let's add it okay now let's write some code so first of all we need some data to try all this function out so what i am trying to do is to create a range of numbers that starts from 1900 to 2020 which corresponds to let's say each years so let years is something that range from 1900 to 2020 all right and this is actually a very good day today is february 29th which is a which occurs once in 4 years on every leap year so let's try to find out all the leap years that comes in between 1900 2020 so for that let's have a predicate function which either returns true or false based on an year value that we provide if it is a leap year the function just says that it's true and if it's not a leap year it will return false so i have a function ready which computes that so i will just get it here so so this is the function a leap year which accepts an year and if it is divisible by 4 and it is not divisible by 100 it's supposed to be a leap year and if the year is divisible by 400 also it's supposed to be a leap year so let's confirm the validity of uh this function let's test it out so leap year of 2020 which should so run it so you can see that for the leap year 2020 the function is returning true and for the year 
2019 it should be returning the value false you can see that true and false for 2020 it's true for 2019 it's false so now let's so this function we can call it as a predicate function which either returns true or false based on some input value and the years which we have just created looks like this so it's a range of numbers that starts with 1900 and not inclusive of the final value that we give in 2020 so it creates an array of numbers starting from 1900 and ending it in 2019 so the function that we are trying to understand is filter which as per the lodash documentation says that it iterates over elements of collection returning an array of elements where the predicate returns truthy let's see that so here i am going to invoke the filter method of lodash and pass in the years and saying that year goes in and leap year of year comes out so this is similar to how we have invoked the map function in the previous video but the difference is that the map function returns whatever value that was being returned from this iterative function here we are trying to return the element from the es collection where this function returns true right so let's maybe store the result of this particular computation into a object called leap years and try to print it out console dot log leap years will clear the output and run it again so here we can see that the output of this particular console.log just returns the leap years out of this particular collection 1904 is a leap year 1908 is a leap year 1912 is a leap year you got the point right so this is what a filter method does let's see what are the other ways of invoking the filter method just like the map function that we have discussed in the last video we can pass in a reference of a predicate function so it looks like this so i will just change the variable type of leap years from const to let so that i can assign value it to into it again so years and instead of having a verbose kind of representation here saying that it's like an array function where year goes in and leap year of year comes out i can just pass in a reference of predicate function so i just have to do this so leap year is a predicate function so i'm just passing its reference so the lodash is smart enough to invoke this function with each individual element inside this collection okay so if i print out the leap years here i will see exactly the same output as i have obtained by invoking the filter method like this so you can see that we have exactly the same result in both these cases okay cool so what else let's move on to working with some collection of objects which we are most likely to see in in actual real world applications we will work with the example from the lodash documentation now please sir let's drag this a bit okay so here we can see that there are two users named barney and fred one of them is an active user and another one is an inactive user having only two elements in the collection 
is not that effective to show different results. So let's add two more users into this collection. So we are going to add two more users. One user is John whose age is 45 and who is active and another user is still a John but with a different age and he is an inactive user. So let's see how we can use filter method to look for different users from this collection. Let's see how we can find the active users from this collection. So it goes like this. The filter method is invoked with the users collection and a user goes in and we are only interested in the users whose active status is true. Let's assign the result into a variable. And let's see what the result is. So I am expecting two users in this particular result who is Barney and John. And we can see that the active users collection returns a list with two users in it and the result is as expected okay what can we do more so one good thing about javascript is you don't have to explicitly specify a equality condition with boolean values so this can be simplified as the below statement filter users and user goes in and we get the active user back so now let's console log the results again. We can see that the return collection is exactly same as, as we have written it in a more verbose way. We just have to specify the predicate condition which returns some truthy value here. And we got it back. Now, in most of the use cases, we are interested in equality conditions like here whether the user active status is equal to true or false or let's say get the list of users with the name john etc so lodash gives shorthand forms to do these kinds of equality checks for instance filter the users with the name john who are active how can we do that let's see that so filter the users a user goes in and user with the user property is equal to John and let's assign it into a variable named John's and print it out we can see that the it filters two objects from the users collection with the name John who is one is active and another one is inactive with age 45 and 42 respectively okay so now how can how does Lodash help us to simplify this particular statement so there are like two ways in which Lodash help us to simplify this filter statement let's see each one of them one by one so John's is again filter users with user as John and let's see how this result would look we can see that the list is again a collection of two elements with the user as John here we can see that we are passing in a sub list of properties of the actual user object so here we are just interested in the elements in the users collection where user is john let's take it to the next level so let's say i am only interested in active users with the name john what i can do here is add one more property from the user collection user object which is the active property and it has to be true so here all the matched elements from the collection has to match these two particular properties that the user is 
john and the active status is to be true so now let's rename it as active johns and let's see what the result would look like so here you can see that the result only returns one object from the users collection where the user is john and the active status is true and now lodash gives you another shorthand as well if you are only interested in one property which has to be checked for an equality condition let's say the user is john another way of writing it is in a list fashion where the first parameter would be the property name and the second parameter would be the value you are looking for so let's say the we are trying to fill the users and you are interested in the user property and the name would be the value associated with that property would be john now let's put it into the variable johns and try to log it so we can see that there are two elements here which matches the condition the user property is equal to john but in so many other cases we want to use other logical operators like less than or greater than etc to do comparisons in those cases we are only left with using a predicate function and passing it to filter function in the form of an anonymous function or as a function reference as we have seen before thank you guys this is all about lodash filter function i hope this video helped you in understanding more about it in the next video we will be covering the other search functions such as reject find sum and every as we saw in the beginning of this video if you like this video please give it a thumbs up and make sure you subscribe if you haven't already since we will be uploading new content every week